Raymond? We waited as long as we could. Lawrence, let's let your daddy sleep. Coroner arranged for transport to meet us up there. I'm taking her. Okay. All right, well, we'll meet you up there. It's a mountain air, buddy. I always talked about bringing you up here, but Mama didn't think it was worth shit.
I'll leave you to it. Daddy? Sorry, buddy, it's just Pastor Hirsch. Marty? Raymond! Good to see you, Raymond. Glad I caught you. Hey there. How you doing, buddy? Daddy? Hey, stop it. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. It's just gonna take him some time. I don't want you to worry about anything. She's in good hands, Raymond. You got her. The plots are right next to your parents. I know you're going through a troubled time right now. But I want you to know that I'm here. So is the Lord. You ever want to talk to me? My door's always open. You did right bringing her back here, Raymond. Hey, look, that's enough. Just sit still. Thanks, Marty. Yeah. Okay. I gotta get going. Okay. Ew. Gross, mommy. Hey, Lawrence, come on. Look at me. People like that, they're gonna spend their whole lives trying to be original. You, you're lucky enough to be born one. Get yourself some chips.
truck just came out of nowhere. Just the middle of the day. Regular day. They got me the first flight back. Oh my god. I'm Samaro. <laughs> Hi, Lawrence. That's right. I'm Officer Marrow. This is your Aunt Caroline. Say hi. You're nice. <laughs> nice to finally meet you. I just... Uh, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. You know what? You're here. Why don't we just start simple? Let me go grab some takeout from Coney, and we'll teach him how to play rummy. How does that sound? Okay. I'll come by first thing in the morning. You're here now, Ray. You better get used to seeing my face. Are you gonna stay here or with Amanda and Berg? No, we're gonna stay here. All right. Okay. All right then. All right. Time to go to sleep now. Are we gonna put mommy in the ground? It's enough now, Lawrence. Time to go to sleep. You're tired. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. I'm gonna be sleeping right here next to you. Go to sleep. You gotta deliver. Because if you don't, Denver's gonna wipe us off the map. Hi, Shelly. Two up and a cup. Mm -hmm. Who's your friend? Oh, we met on social media. Can I help you with something, Bernie? I heard Ray's back in town. That's right. And I heard Maisie Connolly met her maker in the form of an F-150. I figured somebody who knows how hard it is to lose somebody would be a little bit more empathetic. You don't talk about her.
How you doing, bud? Lawrence. I look pretty, Daddy. Jesus Christ, what are you doing? You don't do that! Why am I a boy this time, Daddy? Because your mom and I asked for you, bud. I don't want to yell at you. I'm here, okay? Do you hear me, bud? Let's get you dressed. Is Mama gonna be at the party? Yeah. Some old rounder come along Took my sugar baby and gone and I ain't got no sugar baby now No, I ain't got no sugar baby now Give her every cent I made And I laid her in the shade And I ain't got no sugar baby now I ain't got no sugar baby now Done all I can do To make peace with you I'll send you to your mama next payday Oh, I'll send you to your mama And the dust returns unto the ground from which it came, and the spirit returns to God. Maisie was a daughter of this community, and a wife, and a mother. And we all remember what we love about Maisie and take that love with us every day. We should all remember to keep what we love about Maisie close to our hearts. And in that way, That's her enough. spirit lives through us. Oh, no, no, Daddy, no! You are out of line. Cut it out. No, no, no! So you must remember, oh, stop. stop it! Stop it! Stop it! To all of our lives, oh, stop. Stop. That. stop! Stop doing that. Carry stop. that into stop. our lives. Get away from me! Ray. That's enough. Yeah, we're, we're fine. Thanks. Stop! Get up. Each <laughs> has gone to a better place. Lord welcomes her. She is also here with us. I can't expect him to be all sunshine. I can barely hold him down. You know, pediatrics over in Sunburn, they have someone. Maybe they could talk to him. He's not seeing a fucking shrink. All I'm saying is if he needs help. Right. What do you want us to do here? I don't fucking know. Well, let's see how he's doing when he wakes up. Just one more thing for the people to talk about in this town. I just thought he'd have a chance at something normal. But I guess it don't matter. Because this shit is just as random as an IED on a ten-year-old. Don't bring that Eckerd Tolley shit back here after everything you saw over there. 
You don't get to tell me it doesn't matter. It does matter. You matter. Lawrence matters. And I'm sorry about what happened to Maisie, and I'm sorry that you had to come back here with your family, but you need us. And we need you. Lawrence needs you. So you can cry, and you can be sad, but you damn well better be strong. She's still with you. She's with you in him every day. There now. That's good. You're going to be just fine. Are you the one making all that racket at the service, huh? Lawrence, this is... Nana. Norma. This is Norma Coleman, Lawrence. July's Nana. What? Lawrence? July Rain's Nana. You son of a bitch. Norma! Now just hold on! Father, what you just said, Lawrence. It's okay, buddy. What did you say? July rain. Uh, here, I'll take him. Come on, bud. What? Have you been talking to him about anything? I told you that he's been saying shit since we got up here. It's not normal, I know it. You know, maybe Maisie was telling him things that were going on up here while you were deployed? <sighs> Maisie fucking hated it up here. It's the whole reason we left. Tyraine Coleman is Bernie Coleman's daughter. Remember you and Maisie left town when she was a toddler? Uh, yeah, okay, well, maybe she was at the funeral. Mm, that's not possible. July's case is a cold case. She's been missing. She was 15. No one would dare talk about it. Lawrence saying it to Norma, it's beyond rude. It's downright dangerous. Well, somebody said something. Look, you know how things are here. Answers don't always have to be true as long as they're believable. So you talk to him or you don't talk to him, but you gotta come up with something. Now stop playing with your food, buddy. Do you want to talk to me about what you said to Miss Coleman? Did your mama maybe say some things to you about up here while I was gone? About July rain? July rain? Yeah, that's right, July rain. Little girl from around here. Do you remember talking about her to Miss Coleman? somebody say her name to you? Maybe somebody said it at the house? All right, Lawrence, look, it's really important, okay? You really hurt some people's feelings when you said that, and these aren't the type of people that we want to be hurting. I really need you to try and remember where you heard it. I didn't hear it, Daddy. All right, you're done. I'm not done. Yeah, you are. Look, I don't know who taught you to lie, but you don't do that shit with me. Get this. Come on.
boy, Ray Marrow. Ernie? Figured you'd have been gone by now. Yeah, you're good right there. My condolences about me. I appreciate that. Some people might say you bad luck. But I guess that Reaper he follows all of us, don't he? Mama says your boy's quite a talker. Yep. You know how kids can be. Yes, I do. At least I did. Spit it out, Bernie. When my baby girl first went missing, whole town was bells and whistles out looking for her for weeks. For weeks. You know, this people up here, they, they got their faith. Until they don't. They went from scouring the ends of the earth to just dropping it. And then no one even dared so much as mention her name again after that. Until today. Well, somebody did. And that's where he heard it. He didn't say nothing else. Look, Bernie, I am sorry about your daughter, but we're talking about a little boy here. Yeah. Well, you have a safe trip back to the city. Tired, bud. Let's get you out of here. Now, I pulled up into the parking lot at Coney's the other night. It was a beautiful night, twilight, sun had just set, and saw this remarkable vision, really. You could see everybody's face inside at the booths, and they all looked like they were perfectly at peace, and strangely, they were lit from underneath. It's like a beatific vision. So I walked up the steps, and I, and I walked inside and saw everybody was on their cell phone. <laughs> Everybody was connected. To what? We live in such a difficult time to... It's, I, I call it the disease of, of separateness. Which is why it's so wonderful that we're here today and every Sunday to bear witness together, to have fellowship in Jesus' name. But what we fight on a daily basis, what we struggle is this separateness because when you separate, you are alone. And when you are alone, you are removing yourself from your fellow man, your brothers, your sisters. And it's easy to fall.
one berry. That's right. Hey, listen, bud. Do you remember what you said during Mama's party? Easy, buddy. St. Luther's. How did you know the name of that church, Lawrence? I was there. And when was this, Lawrence? At July's communion. When were you with July, Lawrence? Before. Before when, bud? Do you see that lady over there behind the counter? What do you think her name is? Shelly. Everybody knows Shelly. He knew St. Luther's. He said that he was there for July's communion. So what are you thinking here? You think he's clairvoyant? Maybe the accident did something? Lawrence, look at me, buddy. How many fingers do you think I have behind my back? Three, Daddy. <laughs> Lawrence. Maybe you can talk to me about July Rain. Do you remember what she looks like? Is her hair, is her hair like my hair? No. What if we showed him a picture? I don't know. Well, you called me down here, Ray. What do you want from me? Look, I don't know what this is. I got her file at the precinct. If you want to know if maybe he just heard something about her at the service or if there's something else going on, let's just stop guessing here. Picked her up for stealing from the Wawa over on Norton Street. She was 15 years old. About six months before she gone missing. You wanna play a game, Lawrence? You see all these girls? You think you know which one is July Rain? Sure, Lawrence? Jesus Christ. Did your grandma show you this photo before? Look at me. Did mommy show you this photo? No, daddy. Don't lie to me. Right. Let's take a breath. I don't know if this is related to the accident, but 
I know the idea of someone trying to get into Lawrence's head isn't what you want. But he's gonna need to talk to somebody. We got this woman out of Harrisburg. She's come out for child trauma cases before. A real nice lady, a little bit liberal with some of her techniques, but to tell you the truth, if I get on the phone with someone from Sunbury or Lewisburg, I doubt they'd even come over here. So. You know what Macy would have done? He's still your son, Ray. going on? To tell you the truth, I don't know. My nephew is showing signs of trauma. Hard to explain right now, Chief. What's that got to do with the Coleman case? Not sure. That's why I figured I'd leave you be until I got something more concrete. The Coleman case is cold. Yeah. I know, Chief. All right, well, get out of there. Come on now. And put your goddamn belt back on. And so my job, really, at this point, is just to merely hope that some part of the gospel gets through your brains and your phones to your hearts. And for that, I will be truly grateful. See you next week. God bless. Raymond, welcome. Marty. Sit. The dark night has arrived, Raymond. And he calls himself the internet.
You know, oftentimes, it's when there are no answers that we struggle with our faith the most. Yeah, I'm not a very religious man, Marty. We're all born with faith, Raymond, even you. Before your parents were called on. You may not remember, but I do. Well, I'm not here for me, Marty. I'm here for my son. Do you think that a man's demons can be passed down to his son? We've all done things, Raymond. I don't think that's true, Marty. I think that some men have done things so that others don't have to. Have you ever seen a body die, Marty? Right there in front of you. I've done things. And I think that I've cursed my son because of it. Would you let me pray for you? Yeah. Heavenly Father. This is Sherry. Hi, Ray. I understand that you just lost your wife. My deepest condolences. Death can be quite confusing for the living. Is this the child of light you two made together? Yeah. Hmm? Hey. What's your name? I'm Dr. Sherry. This is Lawrence. Hey, Lawrence, how are we doing today? Good. <laughs> Just doing some light reading. <laughs> so, Caroline, on the phone, you said that he's been saying some pretty wild things. Ever since we rode up here to bury my wife, he's knowing the names of people and places. He's never been up here before. And the girl that you mentioned? Still Irene Coleman. Well, that's a name, isn't it? OK, well, why don't I sit down with them, see if I can figure out what's going on. I don't know how long this is going to take, but you're welcome to wait right outside. How are Berg and Amanda holding up? Best they can. You know Berg served in the Gulf. I ain't saying he's much for conversation, but he knows what it's like out there. Everybody's got their limits, Ray. Talking to someone might serve you well. You have yourself a beautiful boy there, Raymond. What are we looking at? Well, first you have to understand that when a child is involved in a tragic accident, they may suffer from what some may call post-traumatic stress disorder. Right? You may know something about that being in the military. So what? You think the accident did this? I think the accident may have woken something. 
What are we talking about here? Lawrence, look who I have. Now, Lawrence, I want to talk about July Rain again, okay? Like we just did. Your daddy wants to know what we talked about, okay? It's okay, bud. So, where did you hear the name July Rain? Yeah. In your head? Mm. And did you know her? When did you know her? Before. Before when, buddy? Before me. I've never encountered this before, but I've heard stories about it many times. In some cultures, children born with distinctive birthmarks, like Lawrence's, they are watched very carefully as they develop. They believe that these children have a special gift, that they can remember information from before they were born. What are we talking about? We're talking about psychic ability. She thinks he's having memories from a past life. I was stationed in the Middle East. There are a number of religious groups there that I think you're referring to, Doctor. They believe in reincarnation. Sherry here thinks that Lawrence is remembering July because he was July. Are you too effing with me or something? No. It's not a joke, Caroline. And Ray, I'm happy that you're familiar with some of these practices, but these events have been documented throughout the world. They're not specific to one place. I hate to break it to you, but this isn't some kind of spiritual awakening. God knows you'd have a bestseller on the shelves in a month. But you're reaching here. And this... This ain't helping my son. Ray. I'm sorry, Carol, but Jesus Christ. There's plenty of empty tables you'd be more comfortable at. What is it that you do exactly, Dr. Cheryl and Beaumont? And what business is it of yours? Well, ordinarily I just make it my business. But see you with this, you kind of landed right in the middle of my wheelhouse, you know what I mean? I treat people. Yes, that, that much I know. Of more interest to me is what you talked to Ray Maros boy about. <laughs> yeah. While I'd love to breach the doctor patient code of ethics for you and your band of degenerates over there, I think I'll refrain for the sake of my career. I don't always get to practice nonviolence. I always ask myself, is that because I'm a violent person or because
because of the bullshit I get from people. You see, I've been lied to all my life, Doctor. And even when my baby girl went missing, there wasn't a person in this town who had a goddamn word to say about it. All I'm asking is for a little truth. Is that too much to ask, Doc? Whoa. <laughs> and I get hurt on that thing. <laughs> you know, I never blamed you when you left. I was proud of you. Mom was proud of you, even to the end. She knew. I guess fighting was in our cards. You in the war and me in the fours. I knew that you'd be all right once you joined up. Yeah. I don't know why things always happen for us the way they do, Ray. God knows I wish it, we'd had it different, but we don't. And for whatever reason, hell, this could give us a little glimpse. I mean, what if this is true? I think we deserve it. I think we deserve a little glimpse into the other side. And I think as much of a shitty person as Bernie Coleman is, I think he deserves it too. Lawrence, get over here. You lied to me, Raymond. Bernie, listen to me. There's a lot of unanswered questions right now, but I want you to think first. You got it. I got a what? This bitch telling me my daughter's inside of him? Who knows what happened to him? Put the guns down. Fucking kill everybody here. I want to talk to him. Put the guns down, and I'll let you come over here and talk to him. Put them down. your daughter, Bernie. Are you in that baby girl? How does this work? That's not July, Bernie. Look at him. Or is he possessed or something? Lawrence? This is Bernie Coleman. It's July's daddy. Are you in that baby girl? Bernie. What's happening? Talk to me. Is she gone? What happened to you? I gotta know, please. July, I'm so sorry I wasn't there for you. All right, look, I need you to let go of him now. You ain't taking my baby girl! You do it. You think I give a shit? Let him go, and I swear to you, I will stay in town until we get to the bottom of this. But if you don't, I will put a bullet in you, and you're never going to get any of your answers.
Okay. Okay. Sounded iffy on the phone. Bernie probably scared her straight back to Harrisburg. Good morning. Good morning, Dr. Beaumont. Hi, Lawrence. Ray? I'm so sorry about that. I know. Me. I should apologize. He just didn't leave me much of an option. Ray, <laughs> I, I want to thank you for choosing to do this. I think that you'll find that this helps you as much as it helps Lawrence here. How do we do this? We just walk. It's like memory, you know, that old board game? Maybe you played it when you were a child. If Lauren sees something, a street or a shop or a building that he can match to some image he has in his head, then he can build those images into a pattern, into thoughts and hopefully into memories. Come on, buddy. We're gonna play a game, okay? Winner gets his very own stack of pancakes. Okay. Paisanos. It was hers. It was July's. Did I do good, Daddy? Did I win the pancakes? Yeah, bud. You won. You did really good. Chief, I don't expect you to understand. Shut up. Look, 
I realize in the whole scheme of things, your family has been dealt a hard hand with death. To be honest, that's why I thought you'd be good at this job. It's best to know death is going to be knocking on your door at every traffic stop. With your brother coming back here with his troubled kid... That's start my nephew. I said shut up. Did you ever think for one minute how this would affect this town? That's the trouble with America today. No one lets a dead dog lie. A man lost his daughter. And you want me to ask him to relive that because some kid is playing hide-and-go-seek? You've known me longer than my own daddy, Gordon. In that time, I feel like I've tried to be an asset to this department, and I've kept the oath that I swore to, but this, this is... Here's what's going to happen. I'm going to forget we ever had this conversation. Your brother's going to pack his van up and go back to the big city, and you are going to return to being a model officer in this community. Now, if you don't mind, Shelly's chili dogs are calling my name. Ray, do us both a favor and get your son back to Philadelphia, will you? You get him some help, leave the people of this town alone. I don't like this any more than you do, but something is going on here, Sheriff. If you ain't gonna fix it, get used to seeing me, because I'm not going to... Lawrence! Lawrence! He did it, Daddy! It was him! He hurt Jalon! What are you doing? You don't do that! You scared the shit out of me! It's okay. He hurt Jalon! Until next Sunday, though. God we heard damn it. Morgan, stop! Get over to the Coleman Ranch. You better hope Norma doesn't flap her gums to Bernie. What do you think was gonna happen in your little stunt here, huh? I swear to God, anything happens to my brother, I'm holding you responsible. I'll come with you. Goddamn way you got a warrant that fast, Caroline. I didn't see you there, Norma. Just want a word with your boy. I heard your nephew. We all heard him. Boy's got the devil in him. Well, that's hard to say. It's a bit confusing right now, isn't it? It'd really help if I could speak with Bernie. See inside? I told him the boy must have caught some demon in the car when his mama died. Pastor Hirsch, a killer? You know, I've always been fair with you and your family, Norma. Even through the investigation, I treated that case like July was one of my own, didn't I? Bernie, come on out! I always liked you, Caroline. Your mama was a good friend of mine. What your brother spawned. Bernie's coming for answers. And with the Lord on his side, he'll right the wrongs done to this family. You can believe that. I swear to God, Norma, I ain't asking this time. Don't fuck with me. Has she contacted you? 
He's going to want answers, Marty. Jesus Christ. It's the word of a five-year-old. Well, you know how people around here are. If a raccoon came out of the woods and started talking about Bernie Coleman's daughter, then animal control would be cleaning up raccoons for the next year and a half. After all this time, only thing you got to do is just keep your mouth shut on this right now. Let me deal with the Coleman's and the Merrill boy. But listen, if we come down to it, if we get to a breaking point, I want you to think about offering up what you know. They ain't gonna believe I just put her on a bus. I'll take being a lousy lawman and you being a son of a bitch over letting them hang you for this. We're talking about the goddamn Coleman's here, Marty. I want you to come back to the precinct with me. The only way I know you'll be safe. I go hiding at the precinct. I might as well put a guilty sign on my chest. Well, you have to trust me on this one. Caroline, come in. I'm pulling up now. Looks like some kind of barn. I'm on my way. Can you get to the precinct? I wouldn't ask if I had somebody else. Best case scenario, we bring Bernie in and you get to listen to one of Marty's sermons. Stay here. You let me deal with Barney Coleman. Come on, bud. Let's get you sorted. Grandma's got your favorite pancakes in the car all ready for you. Talk to him. Find out what you can. Oh, come on, if you're coming.
Pastor. You have a gun? Goddamn door. So, I want to talk about where you've seen the pastor before, Florence. In the woods. In what woods, Lawrence? I've served this community for 30 years. I know you have. And I know that you're not a violent man, Marty. Bernie Coleman is not the type to listen to reason. You believe your boy? someplace safe and hide. Now. You don't want to do this. This is not going to end well if you make me come in there, Raymond. Let him go. He's good where he is. God damn it, Bernie. I want him in the same room. And I want to hear him say it. You ask him. Right here. Not like this. I said I want the truth. I ain't gonna get it here. Put the gun down. You know, Gordy's gonna be pulling up any second now. You think his brother's gonna give me a fair say? Lock here, Raymond. Enough! I take you to them. They stay here. I just want answers. This is it, Bernie. No guns, including yours. We take my van.
sure you don't want to play, baby? Daddy. Oh, he'll be back for you soon, bud. I want you to get him in the back. Lawrence. Ray! Raymond? It's okay. Daddy? What y'all are doing? This isn't right. Look, look, look here. Baby girl, July. Come, 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 come. He's look not possessed, you half wit. Like, shut up! This is insane. That's enough. How do we do this? I want to hear it f f from him, and I, I want to hear what he saw. Please be quiet. Lawrence, do you recognize this man? What the fuck did you do? Ray, please. Lawrence, look at me. Did he hurt July? This is a child's imagination. You shut your fucking mouth. It's all right, bud. What is it? He hit her. You think for one moment that this man's gonna let me live? Are you willing to carry that? Lawrence, did he kill July? You motherfucker! Burn it! Burn it! Burn it! Burn it! No! Hey, Bernie. Ray, don't take another goddamn step. It's not your fault. Ray! 
She loved you. See your hands, Pastor. Now. To trust the words of a child. For they are the keepers of the divine light. Marty. Jesus Christ. Stand down, Caroline. She had no business being in this town that I told her. She was better. She should see the world. Don't say another word. I loved her. Marty, listen. Marty. I love the her. The ambulance is on the way, Marty. I loved her. <sighs> I tried. I put her on that bus, Marty. Gordy. Shut the fuck up, Marty. Caroline, holster your weapon. You knew. Deputy Merrow, put your gun down. He did the right thing by putting her on that bus and getting the hell out of this town. Jesus Christ, Gordy. But she showed up in the middle of the night. Are you kidding? She convinced the bus driver to drop her off. It was pouring rain. Marty. I'm sorry, Gordy. She was going to tell her father. She just wouldn't listen. Don't. Gordy, I tried. I don't know what you're saying. Attention, Marty. Okay. It's okay, Deputy. Marty, Marty, come here. It's Just okay. Come here. No! Oh my God, Marty! Oh, Marty! God damn it!
How are we doing, bud? We can still go. No. I'm fine, Daddy. 